What's up, everybody? I'm Miranda Alcaraz, and this is episode number 22 of the More Than Nothing podcast. And I've asked once again my husband, Julian Alcaraz, to join us today. I feel very honored to be a frequent guest. I asked you like literally like an hour ago to do this. <laughs> it's usually how it always goes. Right? Yeah. So um, in the last few episodes, we've been talking a lot about belief and changing your beliefs and how they can hold you back or hinder you or be like a crutch for an excuse that you might have for why you're not seeing results or why you can't change your circumstances or whatever. And I share a lot, obviously, of my experiences. I've talked about you on those episodes and given examples of like your nutrition or the amount that you read now versus before. But I was like, instead of just talking about it and giving examples for him, why don't I ask him about it myself? So I think as I was driving over here after I asked you to be on it, I was like, how am I going to explain this? And one of the things that I think of when I think of you and me, and I'm sure there's more ways than that, that this plays out than just us. But for me, when I had a belief about myself, like if I wasn't good at something or I believed that um, I wasn't capable of doing something or whatever, my defense mechanism for that uh, was to kind of um, the like the perfectionism thing. Mm -hmm. So I would go into the, I'm going to wreck myself proving that I can do this and I'm going to like feel bad about the fact that I can't do it like openly, like openly I'll feel insecure about it. Um, but I feel like you're the opposite of that, or at least <laughs> when we met and we've talked about this a lot and still to this day, you are for sure one of the, if not the most confident people or person that I know. Really? I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, yeah. I mean, you've met a lot of people. I have met a lot of people. So, so, so I said that, one wow. of the, one of the, for sure. Who else is up there? Like a, I want to see who, like who a Dave you... Castro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so who <laughs> might have the same issue that you had <laughs> before. I don't know. Like we meet a lot of athletes and stuff, but it was, um, I think now it's more a real confidence where when we met, it was more an outward show of confidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've known each other now for it, almost five years. Um, it'll be five years this year. And the amount that you have changed as a person is insane. Like anyone that has known you the whole time, like I'm sure actually that even people back home that we left back in California and haven't seen you since, you know, three, four years ago are confused about just how this all <laughs> happened, right? Um, but you you were so confident. I remember that first night that we hung out. Um, that was one of the things that I really liked about you is that you were just so confident, but not in like a, I wouldn't say like in a arrogant or cocky way, but there was a lot of confidence that came out. Well, as our relationship developed and I got to know you, I have learned and you've shared with me that that was more of like um, how you would deal with if things if there were things you didn't know how to do or things that you didn't think um, you wanted to take the time to learn or whatever, instead of me being like, oh my gosh, I feel so embarrassed that I don't do this or know this, you would just be like, I don't need that. I, what? I'm fine the way I am. Mm -hmm. So I think there's two ways that it plays out. And I think um, a lot of times people confuse that with I don't need that with being confident when really it's just another way of brushing it off and not thinking about it. So I wanted to ask you how you change that mindset, because I think your mindset is a lot more common for men. Mm -hmm. um, and the mm -hmm. women usually feel like more of the insecurities and try to like cover it up or hide it or feel bad about it. So specifically when it comes to the nutrition stuff, because you were the ultimate, I work out, I don't need to, I don't need to stop eating this or that. I wanted to talk about the evolution because the other thing that you never did was a massive overhaul. And that's like the whole point of the more than nothing podcast is it's like, you don't go from A to Z, like there's B, C, all the letters in between. And like, what, how did you get out of the mindset of, I don't need this. Like I'm almost too good for this to where you're at now. Like what were the steps? Well, I think, cause even there's times where you've expressed how it is a little frustrating for you 
because you've tried to tell me all these things before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're like, what is it about it now that made you change as opposed to when I was telling you? And I think that's something that's very common. I mean, if you look at it, applying it to people in our own family, our personal families, like you, us, all of us here in this crew living a healthier lifestyle and our parents not, <clears throat> You want to give somebody all the all the knowledge you have, but they just won't soak it in. It's interesting how that works, right? You start figuring out that it deals with a lot of in personal insecurities, or the person will immediately disconnect from you trying to help them. Be like, I'm not, I'm done paying attention. You know, like they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think for me, once I came to a realization, especially well, for starters, I knew that the only way for me to gain knowledge was actually to read and i'm i'm kind of glad that because my first approach was going to be like hey i'm going to do the 100 top novels or not not the 100 um 100 books to read before you die list right and what was the first audiobook that you listened to like the alchemist so did you listen to, had you ever listened to a full audiobook before The Alchemist? No, I didn't. So what was it in your mind that all of a sudden, because you like told me that for so long you didn't think of yourself as like a reader or somebody who could get into that sort of thing. So what, did you read an article? Like, did you hear somebody that had done this? Like no, what, well, you were, what shifted it? <clears throat> well, you were reading audiobooks. Mm -hmm. You were constantly listening to podcasts. And one of the things that I struggle with, which is really weird is listening to other people. Um, <laughs> I hate listening to podcasts. Like their voices or like just what they have to say? I don't say. know, just because I feel like <laughs> podcasts sometimes are really surface. Like they're very summarized mm -hmm. and they don't talk about the in-depth and the, the small details that led to the, the summary right. of those things. And that's why, like of course, anybody that goes on a podcast is going to talk about their successes. And then you, yeah. Sometimes they will forget to talk about the little pieces in their lives that kind of push them into that. For me, it was like you, I was learning so much from you. We we're starting to delegate tasks to employees as we kind of were starting to build up, you know, in members and street parking and I was handing off my tedious tasks. Well, then I started questioning what my value was. I was like, well, what is your value? I used to value, my mindset was work hard and by doing tedious tasks, like labor, labor as work hard. When then you start to realize that, no, actually, that actually what leads to burnout. You have to work smarter. Anyway, when you were listening to your podcast, I was like, maybe I should like, I don't know, maybe I'll try this. And so then I just went through the top 100 books on the book app that I have here, the iTunes one. And I don't know, The Alchemist just stood out. Mm -hmm. And I here heard a little preview and I was like, Sure, let me start here, not knowing much about what it was going to be about. And then all of a sudden, just the whole thing made sense. And that's when I realized that what I needed first was more books on reflection. Once you start listening to books on reflection, you're able to answer a lot more questions about yourself and be honest with yourself about who you truly are and what you do like and what you don't like and be okay with that. So I think a lot of times people are afraid to express who they are because you are afraid to be judged. We live in a society now that judges people when nobody knows nobody knows the true picture. There's instances in our life that nobody knows the true picture that we still don't share with people unless they're super close to us. Mm -hmm. So nobody gets it. People don't know the pain that you're going through because we don't share it. Mm -hmm. And I'm being very open about it right now. And so once I got into The Alchemist and realized like that self-awareness journey, I was like, I really enjoyed this. I questioned everything that I thought I, knew. I was like what is your purpose what is your what what is your legend here because the whole crossfit games thing was just that's just a chapter that was only a chapter and for me to feel to be content and be like okay well now I'm just going to be dedicate myself to being a family man it's like well being a family man is just by nature a part of what I do that's not my legend because then we talk about what happens when our boys grow up and they go to college and then they are achieving their personal legend mm -hmm. What are we doing? People forget themselves. As parents, I think it's great and be amazing parents, but don't forget about your life. Don't forget about what you're meant to achieve and what your purpose is in this world because each one of us is meant to achieve something. And for you to just say, oh, to raise my kids, that's only a chapter of your life. 
That's only a chapter because even when they become teenagers, of course, they're, they're, you're always going to be involved in that process, but they become independent at a certain point. So then you've, I know you remember that shift. I kept questioning like, what I wanted to do. And then I was like, okay, well, I really enjoyed this book. And so much was gained just from this book and how much I questioned my life. Let me go to another one. So how did you, okay, so what was your belief about <clears throat> your ability to like read or pay attention to a book before you tried to do it? Like what was it that held you back from ever doing it before that? I don't know. It was just like the, when I thought of books, I thought of boring books, the <laughs> stuff that you get assigned in school. This is a homework assignment. Books are a homework assignment. So I think many of us feel that way. And when you started The Alchemist, were you kind of like, we'll see how this goes, but it's probably going to suck and it's probably going to be boring? Or how did you change that to be excited about it? I just did it and I was like, well, worst case scenario, I realize that I don't like it and then I move on. But Great. 20, 30 minutes into it, I realized like, wow, I'm really captured into this story. And then once I got done with it, I said, like, I'm going to try another one. This is great. And then I think my second book was Bad Blood, which is on the company Theranos. Was, yeah, you got really into that but book. But it was so cool because, like, you know, now looking back, seeing, like, what kind of culture and, you know, now where we're at in the stage of business, you realize the many mistakes and the many, like, mind-blowing things that happened in that industry and that within Theranos, which is so wild. But anyway, then it led to me, again, enjoying a second book, and then I went to a third book, and then I was like, and then I read The Four Agreements, and then I read another, and then I called our therap therapist, and I was like, do you have any books you recommend on self-awareness? And she's like, yeah, try this one. And I, then I read that one, and I loved it. And then I did a whole series of, you know, just uh, self-development. Because you, in order for you to grow, you have to challenge yourself. You have to challenge who you are. You have to challenge everything that you thought that you believed. Same thing church does. Shocking. <laughs> you know, and <clears throat> I think it was really special for me to be able to question all those things on top of, like, realizing the responsibilities that I now have um, and what my role is in this life, especially one is being a husband, being a father, a business owner. And, but, like, what, what, am, what is my purpose here? What am I trying to achieve here? You know, and then I got into realizing that I enjoyed reading and I was like, man, these books offer so much perspective in life, um, which then led to, you know, books on psychological books, which, again, really helped a lot. And then I realized that in order for me, like, you get to choose what you want to do. So then I was like, well, let me learn about nutrition. And then I started reading nutrition books, going in with the open mind that it's easy to get influenced and manipulated by each book because, like, you're so in the story and involved in it but also realizing that those are all just insights into being like seeing all many different points of view, make your own and then live your path still. Don't live somebody else's path. Um, so I think in having like proper awareness as far as applying science and things to my approach now, same thing with finances and everything and, um, Cons you know, having conversations with you, having conversations with our accountant, having conversations with our lend, my, you know, the lenders, people that are professionals in, the, in what they do, and just asking the right questions, not being afraid to ask questions because what are they going to do? Somebody who's willing, like it's the same as us. I would love for people to ask us, like, what did you do to get to where you at, and be honest with them. Someone who's genuine, like, well, let me let me share you what I know. Someone who's an a hole in the profession and says, aha, you're not going to achieve what I achieve. Well, then F you, you're an a-hole. <laughs> you know, like, so luckily we've been building, like, you know, even with this new home, we had, we just purchased another property, but the the lender, like the relationship that I have, I made a kind of let me quit, make a He got you a call. book. You know, he sent me a book and I thought that was really <laughs> special. It was just a very, because after every purchase we made, he would just send me like a generic gift that didn't seem personal. And then after building this relationship he's, and I sat down with him. I was like, I want to have a meeting with you. I want to pick your brain. I think that was like a big step for him. He was like, wow, like he's serious. So kind of going back, would mm. you say that like what, what was holding you back before and yeah. what, cause what I think holds a lot of people back is number one, they're worried about looking silly. So there was a lot of people maybe, and you, you were confident and I don't think you would have worried about this, but I think that there are a lot of people who worry that if they're like hanging out with their bros and they're like yo i think i'm gonna read like the alchemist that mm -hmm. their friends would be like what like that why like that's so dumb like let's go whatever um you weren't really like that but i see 
that a lot. And people, they're worried about like sharing their goals or sharing something about their personality that they want to change or that they want to improve themselves. But one thing that you, that I think a lot of the changes that have happened um, since we've moved here specifically um, were where we lived before. It was very easy to fill your days and nights with um, distractions. Mm-hmm. And so like you didn't have space or time to force self-improvement or to reflect on what your legend might be because you're just doing random stuff all the time to entertain yourself as opposed to anything that's actually going to move you forward. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's easier to identify now what was going wrong at that time. It was just my circle of people who I thought were my friends and not now... That's why I say I don't have any friends because for me to identify somebody as a friend is a, is a lot, right? Like what I consider a friend is very um, – so we have more acquaintances than anything, right? I think back then what I thought people were my friends, they just – they they weren't, right? Like because people don't make fun of you for when you try to achieve growth. Mm-hmm. If someone really cares about you, you let that person – and you're there to guide them or influence them in the right steps, right? Not, hey, I have an idea, and then for you to be like, that's dumb. It's like, well – you're done. <laughs> you know, like you just got to adopt that mindset. You know, at a certain point, you'll figure it out, you know, whether it's the right choice for you or not, because what's maybe the wrong choice for you may be the right choice for somebody else. But, you know, you just got to make a decision. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you're stuck in a loop of doubt and negativity and pay attention to how with the conversations you have with individuals around you, are they like growth? Like, are you guys growing or are you guys very stuck in talking about things that just don't matter in life. You know, mm-hmm. I I like having important, meaningful conversations um, about the stuff that's being learned, about stuff that I can share. And there's going to be a time and a place to laugh and about certain things or talk about movies or whatever. But, you know, you're going to find that there's so much that we don't know and that there is to know. And I like those are great things to share now. Like that's a meaningful conversation. Um, mm-hmm. So with your with your food, mm-hmm. just really quickly, go through the evolution of when I met you eating random shaved ice with sh- straight up liquid sugar on top of it and Cheetos and wings a couple of times a week. Like what were the small changes throughout? Because I think people who are there can't even imagine eating the way that you're eating now. And they think it needs to be this like overnight thing. So can you like go from, this is the kind of the first thing I changed and then somehow this came became a part of it and then this and this, and now you're where you're at. And Cause it's been four years of evolution. Yeah. I would say the changes I started making was one, when you brought it, like just being, again, just being around you and the choices that you made, cause you had awareness naturally put me in a position where like, okay, well, I'm not like going to be the only person. This is where, again, who you're around and what they eat. Was I food shaming you? No, but I just, again, (laughs) like I knew you were making healthier choices based off of what you were eating. So I was like, naturally, I would just start eating what you ate. And you would say no to like, I'm not feeling it because I would ask you like, what do you feel like eating? And you would tell me, I was like, okay, well, it doesn't give me much option. So boring, yeah. Yeah, so then (laughs) I would stop going to that. That was step one, okay? And then when... um, then when we moved in together, again, now we made things more real, right? Um, we started, yeah, we still had our pizza. We still had our, like, the counter. Just better quality foods, but doesn't mean that they still weren't high in calorie consumption. And we were just talking about this the other day, like, the difference between this pregnancy and last, how now you're not having as much inflammation as even last time that mm-hmm. we've made healthier choices because I was still training for the games. I was still eating bowls of cereal at night, right? Like, just some random stuff, but not at nowhere near. There was more structure. Like I need to eat this many times, mm-hmm. but there was, there were still changes to be made. And then, um, like we would still buy our cookies at Trader Joe's. Like I would get the ginger snaps or things like that. Oh yeah, you would get random Just cookies, random and mochi stuff. balls. Yeah. Oh, like, you always like that. yes. Yeah, like oh man. But then, so when you start cleaning up, and then you realize how much your body is feeling different and cleaner, and as you're working out, and then we moved here. Then we started the street parking templates and then kind of jumping into that and being more aware and taking the time for at least making adjustments. It takes a week for you to kind of get into a flow. And it was like, okay, this isn't too bad. 
because then we shifted away from not having as many veggies. We would prioritize greens over hearty, more fibrous veggies. Yeah, it would just be like lettuce mixes and stuff yeah. on top. So no wonder we were still struggling. Like, And that's where reading the nutrition books, understanding how food works, then now we've made an We've made the ultimate change now to you know our eating where it's at now, and it feels great to just take control of that. Um, but you have to have awareness more than anything because if you don't have awareness, you'll you only make s- certain decisions right based off of what you know. Mm-hmm. And the more you know, the more dialed in decisions you can make. Same thing with when it comes to gambling or making bets um, or let's just say stocks, something that people can relate to. People say stocks are risky, but it's like, well, of course it's risky, but the more awareness you have of the item, the less risk you end up taking. Same thing with nutrition. The more awareness you have with the items, the less risk you end up taking. The, you don't make as many decisions to go have donuts or things like that. You're like, mm, I'm not going to do that because I, for what, right? Um, but again, look at the track, psychological books, self-awareness books, then nutrition books. Mm-hmm. Four years later, now we're at where we're at now. So not rushing the process. I think the, the self-awareness and psychological books were great to do before the nutrition books because people don't account for the psychological struggle that they go through through a, a nutrition change. It's hard. Or any change. It's like so hard. Uh, I think if you have issues that you're dealing with um, that you don't even, maybe you're not even aware of that are there, any change that you try to make, in your life, um, you're going to hit that place where your uh, psychological and maybe emotional growth won't allow you to go through that until mm-hmm. you figure out that issue that's blocking you. Yeah. And like the two main things that I hear you saying about um, starting and just seeing what happens with these audiobooks and starting and seeing what happens when you make these changes is just like there's got to be a level of humility to say, Maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I will like reading and I'm just going to try it and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was you ditched the hundred books because you were going to do the hundred books. And like you said, it's okay. Like I got through some of them and then I realized that I had a specific interest. So I went that way. But at least that like one step into the hundred books is what got you started. Mm -hmm. Like just start, just choose something Mm -hmm. and start down the path and then make tweaks whether it's in your business or in your diet or whatever. And the same thing with your nutrition, like, all right, I don't need to go to these like random restaurants all the time. I'll not eat out as much or I'll not go to 25 cent wings or whatever it was (laughs) anymore because Miranda Miranda doesn't like the wings. Fine. I, I changed it. And then you're like, oh, that's not too bad. I don't really miss it too much. And then it's the next thing. And it's just the path it's start, but it's being humble enough to say, you know what? Maybe I, maybe I could change some things or maybe mm-hmm. I could try this or maybe I'm wrong about how I feel about reading or maybe I do like exercise. I just need to try something different. And then... And I think books are the best way for you to yeah. realize that like you don't have to share your opinion with other people. Like just read, make be aware and fine, don't share what you read. But now at least you're, you don't feel as bad because you're right. People just when they ask something of somebody and then they feel embarrassed about what they're asking. OK, well, then don't. If you don't want to put yourself through that, then just look it up. Yes. You look can learn anything. Yeah. Yes. And then with just to wrap it up as in more than nothing fashion, you don't have to, for like this type of thing, whether you're trying to add more reading or add more podcasts or change your nutrition. Again, it's not an overhaul. He didn't like sit in the, I mean, sometimes, but you don't have to like sit in a dark room with a stack of books reading for hours a day to like start this journey. It's like, I mean, it basically started out when we were driving and when we were walking our dog yeah. and then it's kind of gone from there and you've really fallen in love with it and you do it more often than just that now. Oh, yeah. But it's where people are like, well, what am I supposed to, I'm re- we're reading now? Like when I, I'm for, I barely have time to work out and now we're talking about reading. Like when am I supposed to do that? Everybody drives. Many people have dogs, everybody, you know, there are moments where you can just put it in. It's why the audio books are so nice, but it doesn't ever have to be a major overhaul, but you mm-hmm. do just need to start doing something that'll help you to figure out yourself, who you are. And as soon as you can figure that out, your path is going to be much, much better. Yes. 
So that's it. I wanted to bring him in here to just kind of talk <laughs> about that because I've used the examples of the reading and the nutrition several times in the last few weeks. Um, and I just wanted to rem remind you guys that, again, this is a podcast, so there's lots that's still missing in between oh, yeah. all that. And this is exactly why, you know, just be more aware. Yeah, we would need a really long time to exactly. really dive into it. Yeah. Yes. But thank, thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> You're welcome. We'll see you guys next time.